Uh, the time has come for Monday, July 16, 2018, regular council meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman May. Alderman Valco. Alderman Taylor. Alderman Bolton. Present. Alderman Seeger. Present. Alderman Mosio. Here. Alderman Villalobos. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Tempest. Present. Mayor Cunningham. Uh, present. Uh, everyone will please stand for invocation presided by Reverend Jim Merrill of St. Patrick's Church, Wadsworth, Illinois. Uh, Melody Pavlinette and Mr. Jerry Archibald will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Um, even though I pastor the church in Wadsworth, I was born and raised here in Waukegan. I have to say, Nana Stage just a little on Sheridan Court, which is the part of Waukegan. Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your word, you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. We ask that you would behold and visit this city and all the cities of the earth. Renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Send us honest and capable leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty prejudice and oppression, that peace may always prevail with righteousness and justice with order, and that men, women, and children from different cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of our common humanity. Praying this in God's holy name, amen. 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 allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor's comments. Welcome everyone, as always, thank you for coming. We've spoken about this in the past, in a few meetings, but once again, please join Waukegan Public Works and the city clerk's office in donating food for the summer food drive called Lake County Responding to Hunger. This is a countywide competition amongst public works departments with the goal of creating the largest annual food drive in Lake County. The last day to, don to donate is July 24th, and there is a box outside the clerk's office in window one. If you're not mistaken, you should see it right down here. Waukegan was saddened to hear that Margaret Young, former deputy city clerk and collector under former Mayor Bill Durkin, passed away last week. She was a wonderful member of our Waukegan community and will be dearly missed. Summer concerts. Waukegan has a lot of free outdoor music during the, the, during the summer, including the Waukegan Band on Tuesday, Tuesday nights at Steiner Pavilion, courtyard concert at the library, weekends at the Harbor's Edge, and the Waukegan Main Street Jack Benny Plaza series. We ask that everybody take advantage of the summer weather free uh, and free good music. Business after hours. Waukegan Chamber of Commerce invites business people to business after hours this Thursday, July 19th uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. at Signature Flight Support at the Waukegan Airport. This is, this is an excellent networking opportunity for our local business businesses and people who are looking to invest in Waukegan. Family Piano. Family Piano regularly hosts jazz, classical, pop, and folk concerts at their Riverside Room. Uh, the next one is Swing Ensemble and Mick Archer Trio this Friday at 7.30 p.m. The Lake County Clerk of the Circuit Court is holding a mobile passport event here in Waukegan City Council Chambers on Saturday, July 28th 
from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment is necessary, and the information is available at the Lake County Circuit Clerk dot org. Again, Lake County Circuit Clerk Circuit Court dot org. Website, it's their website. PD, Police Department, Fire Department, National Night Out and Touch a Truck is Friday, August 3rd from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Waukegan Beach. This free fam family friendly event is co hosted by Waukegan Park District, Waukegan Police Department, and Waukegan Fire Department. Plan to stay later to watch Zootopia, one of the Park District's free movies in the park. For these events and others, check out waukeganil.gov or hashtag explore Waukegan. At this time, Jane Ferry is going to come up now and talk about a beautiful work of art that Waukegan has been blessed with. Jane. Thank you, Mary. This is very exciting for us. I know a lot of people have started to see the mural on Belvedere. We're calling it Dream Big, but that might be a temporary name. We had an artist named Everett Reynolds approach us and say, this is what I'd like to do. Do I have permission? How do I go around doing this? And we were lucky enough to have this talented person look at a wall and come up with a fantastic idea which honors another very talented person from Waukegan, Ray Bradbury. So I happen to know Everett is in the audience tonight. Everett, come on up. While he's coming up, I want to point out that there was a great article this weekend in the New Sun, front page, big picture, big story, and we shared it, and 83 people have shared it from our Facebook page with 8,400 reaches. I was talking to Everett before this council meeting, and he said he also, of course, shared it on his page. And really, everybody, to a person, including Alderman Seeger, who's been really pushing this, has said, wow, this is really added on one of the main corridors to Waukegan. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Everett. Thank you. I kind of just wanted to uh, introduce myself to everybody here um, and take the time out to thank everybody that helped me uh, get the mural up, um, including uh, David, Motley, Jane here, um, the building owner, the property owner, Mike and uh, Joe as well. Um, and I kind of just wanted to let everybody know that I will be officially signing the mural on the 22nd, Sunday the 22nd at 1 p.m. Kind of just wanted to invite everybody out to uh, celebrate the completion of something positive in the community. Mm -hmm. so. okay. And so with that, we'd like to recognize Everett with a Waukegan Proud Award because we are very proud of him. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Uh, the, the city of Waukegan does hereby present Everett Reynolds the Waukegan Proud Award for sharing his artistic creativity and for helping to beautify Waukegan with his dream big mural on Belvedere Road. Presented at the City Council on July 16, 2018, Signed by myself, the Mayor of Waukegan, Sam Cunningham, and Janet Kilkelly, Waukegan City Clerk. And I'm going to come back around and, in, and present to you. I just heard Alderman Tippett says officially got a motion by Alderman Tippett, second by <laughs> Alderman Bolton. Uh, all, any questions to the motion? All those approved. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. <It's amazing. laughs> you know, I, I, I always like to say a lot of times when our young men and young ladies do something outstanding, not only in community, but in this country, sometimes we don't give them the recognition they need hey. to move on.
Are Mike uh, and or Jose here? Mike Foster and Jose Zuniga. One is the owner of the building and the other gentleman is? The business owner. The business owner. And Everett went the right way. He talked to them first, got clearance from them first, and then came to us for yeah. great information That's and help. Right <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure that they get their walking and proud awards as well. To tag them without their permission, but make congratulations. Keep it up. <laughs> Your Honor, just re re referred to keep it up. I hope this is one of many. So any business owners or somebody that wants a mural, I think you need to get a hold of this young man and let him get to work and pay him what he's worth. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't doing it for free, I'm sure. There's nothing wrong with that. This is America, after all. Yeah. Also, what was the, the day and time again of the signing? I was trying to put that down. July 22nd. Sunday the 22nd at 1 p.m. OK, thank you. Are you going to do it right at that location? Yes. OK. Yeah, well, get that on the on the uh, on everybody's calendar. So, just in case you're there, but thank you again, sir. Mr. Wells, I thank you again. You're very very talented. Don't stop painting, man. That's a beautiful mural, beautiful, and I'm proud to have it in the second ward and in the city of Waukegan. Thank you so much. Amen. Don't you dare start stop painting or I'll 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 take that brush. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. That's a lot of love there, buddy. Motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Moziel to approve regular meeting minutes from July second, twenty eighteen. Are there any questions to the motion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's passed and carried. Uh, item three, audience time. Madam Clerk. Yes. You have three minutes and Mary Blamore. Mayor and Council. I rise to address the issuing of yet another city contract to Peter Baker. Is he the only one that's allowed to perform work in our city? Just months ago, you rushed through a $1.3 billion, million dollar contract to him to pay the streets. Not only were there questions about how long the requests for bids were posted, but you waived the 30% local and minority labor use provisions. In effect, you took about $230,000 out of the pockets of residents who are qualified to work with Peter Baker on this city project. Today, I understand you are voting to give Peter Baker another $6 million contract. Again, I question the bidding process. However, my bigger questions are around why you have once again waived the 30% local and minority labor provision. Once again, this is about $2 million that could be gone to uh, Waukegan workers if, as they perform work in our own city. If you really care about this city, this ought to bother all of you. A few weeks ago, Mayor, you did that news piece about diversity. And here, we continue to kick local and minority workers in the face when it comes to providing them with a fair opportunity to make a living. They are, as we all, deserve better than this. After all, they're residents and taxpayers, and Mr. Baker doesn't live in this city, but continues to gut, gut it for money. I appeal to this entire council to rethink our bidding process and put all contracts up for bid. Ensure that the process is transparent and demand that qualified <coughs> residents, women, and people of color have a fair shot at earning a living. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Young.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Barbara Young, and I'm a longtime resident of the First Ward. I had no idea of what I would experience while seeking signatures for the South Sheridan Revitalization Plan last month. We are invited into a unit. It's 90 plus degrees. The young mother's toilet is leaking. She has placed a pot to prevent the water from destroying the rest of her furniture. The mold on the walls and floors smell musty, even though she continually mops the floors. Mold growth is a health risk, which can cause nasal stuffiness, throat, and pulmonary problems. It is reported that mold can be worse for people who have weakened or undeveloped immune systems, such as infants <coughs> and children. One of the main reasons that children are so vulnerable to mold and these toxins is because their immune system is developing from birth to adolescence. A child's immune system is not fully developed and disturbance of foreign substances brought into their bodies is not healthy. I look at her youngest child laying asleep on the damp couch and wonder what is his or brother's, his brother's lungs must look like. She then informs us that he has experienced an asthma attack and had to be taken to the emergency room. She herself has asthma. The maintenance department told her not to use the toilet or the tub for four to five days. It's 90 degrees. This means that she can't provide a cool bath for her children, nor can she use the toilet. Is she expected to use another pot to hold the waste until it is repaired? The Barwell Center did not or would not provide temporary shelter for this family, nor would they allow her to stay in another unit. After leaving her to, to return to the comforts of my own home, my working toilet and tub, able to take a cool shower at will, not many blocks away, I could not con consciously rest until we attempted to help them. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? That's 1 John 3 and 17. A plea was made on Facebook and passionate residents donated funds to pay for temporary shelter for her and her children, even residents out of state. We also was able to purchase an Uber card to get her back and forth to work and a Walgreens gift certificate for incidentals. Upon returning to a unit, the repairs were not completed as promised. After contacting Alderman Bolton, who then spoke with the executive director, the leak was finally patched up July 10th. I would first like to challenge first Mayor Cunningham, as well as all the aldermen, to come and take a look at the devastating conditions of the units at the Barware Map. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kasama Strada. <coughs> Hello, uh, my name is Charisma Strader. I'm 18 years old and I'm currently enrolled as a medical student here at um, State Career College, where I'm studying further to become a registered medical assistant. My child live, childhood lives here in the city of Waukegan. Here's where I'm from and here's my concern. One morning, my grandmother entered my room, making plans for us to hang out with each other for the day. She then stated that I would be accompanying her in collecting signatures to help the process of the South Sheridan Revitalization Plan. Hanging with my grandmother is something I enjoy, and I agree to become a part of a team of individuals with good intentions for those living with lesser quality. I was well aware that my great-grandparents sold their home over 30 years ago to help make amends for the first war. While in dearest of conversations with my great-grandfather, Mr. John Ivory Young, he would sometimes explain to me how he hoped that the city would follow through with the plans that had been promised to him, and how he hoped, how he hoped to be able to see a great change. Although he lived to be 91 years old, he did not live long enough to see that with his own vision. Ever since a young girl, my grandmother has been responsible for instilling such powerful lessons of life into who I am today. Though she was most effective in the idea of value. Value in person of who I was created to be and similarly value the ways of my life and how I was living. I grew up a grateful young lady, not only for materialistic matters, but of life subjects beyond that in stable conditions. Concluding our time connecting with those residing at Bearwell Manor, she asked me what lessons I had learned and I was able to say that I can vividly visualize all of what she had taught me about value. 
Upon knocking on the door of a classmate who also attends State Career College, I had always viewed her in a brightly positive way as a woman who was compassionate and strong on what she believed in. But in this instance, I was shifted to believe that she was more of a young mother who has a negative stigma placed on her as a result of society today, but only when it became to conversation regarding the area and conditions in which she lived in. Personally, I grew up the oldest out of seven grandchildren, and I feel heavy emotion for those young children living in Barewell Manor. Beforehand, I could almost never force myself into seeing any of us living so poorly before actually connecting with those children. But it could have been us. They wake up each and every day um, opening their eyes to brick cinder walls, the same brick cinder walls used to build prison cells. While I am thankful the seven of us have fared better, my heart still immensely hurts for them. I imagine how difficult it would, must be for those young, impressionable minds to have a bright, wholesome outlook while living in an environment so close to prison as one could get without actually having inmate number. I kindly asked the mayor and all included members of the city council to compassionately consider the living conditions of the tenants at Barewell, Barewell Manor and create a well thought plan to build those tenants livable housing, not just affordable, affordable housing, because the way we live plays an immensely important part of who we are and where we end up in life. Thank you. Thank you. Selena Gomez Bellos. Good evening. Uh, so it's me, Selena. I'm your executive director of the Waukegan Public Library. It's nice to see everyone this evening. I just came to do two very heartfelt thank yous. Uh, first off, uh, I wanted to speak to our Early Learning Center, which was recently reopened with a new theme called Yay for Community Helpers. Uh, and thank everyone that was able to come there. Please do join us. Uh, it's beautiful. We highlight the, the great aspects of our city. Uh, teachers, doctors, grocers, uh, the, the postal service, firefighters, the police department, it's all there and it's a great place for kids to learn and about what happens in our community. So if you haven't had a chance to see it, please do come and see that. Um, it's wonderful. Uh, the other thing I want to say a thank you for, as Amir mentioned, we have our summer concerts on Friday at noon, which are fantastic. I've, I was waiting from the day that I started this job to see these concerts and I've been so pleased. I've only missed one uh, for being out of town. And uh, I have to thank especially Janet Kilkelly, our, our clerk, for uh, we had a suggestion. And within five minutes, I was able to give that suggestion to her. And by that afternoon, we were able to have started a discussion on opening up the parking lot across the street from the library to be free to concert goers uh, during that time to make it easier for our seniors and our uh, adults of need to be able to see our concerts even better because they didn't have to struggle for parking or go very far uh, if they had mobility issues. So that has been really, really wonderful. So many thank yous to Janet, to, to uh, Mayor Cunningham, and of course Alderman and David, and everyone else who was involved in that. It's really been a wonderful and welcome uh, gesture on the part of the city, and I, I hope we continue to have uh, cooperation like that as we move into the future. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give you my heartfelt thanks for all of that. I will be back hopefully once a month or so and hopefully bring you back even more wonderful news. But other than that, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Williams. everyone. As was said, my name is Joel Williams. I'm executive director of Pads Lake County. Uh, and I'm just call, uh, here tonight to um, tell the council again about our Pads Summit that we're going to be hosting in September. Um, save the day cards were sent out. Hopefully you got those either through email or regular mail. Uh, but the purpose of the summit is really to make sure that we are getting some word out about what Pads really is and does. There's a lot of things that are, um, I think, being around for 30 years, Things have changed. There's going to be a lot of information about what we're doing today, and we want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. And so we're inviting <coughs> elected leaders and government leaders throughout Lake County to talk about ways that we can work together to come to some solutions. Uh, and it is going to be September 12th uh, out at CLC in uh, Grace Lake. I got some cards that uh, can pass around, but uh, we're inviting community leaders such as yourselves uh, and also um, government leaders such as police chiefs, township supervisors, so on and so forth. 
really hoping that this will be a very positive and productive discussion. Uh, we're going to have some information about what PADS is and does, but then we're also going to have uh, some opportunity for you to discuss some solutions with other leaders in other communities that will be facilitated by some professionals who know how to do that sort of thing. So uh, we're really hoping for a very positive discussion and we hope that you all can be there. Again, it's Wednesday, September 12th out at CLC. More formal uh, invitations will be going out shortly, but we're hoping that you'll be able to save the date. So again, thank you all very much. Thank you. Ralph Peterson. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I want to change around a little bit what I was getting ready to say. I'm going to be real brief, so I'm going to talk kind of fast. I would like to comment further on Mrs. Moore and Mrs. Young's comments. Mayor, you lied totally and knowingly to the first war. Every time you allow, this is in reference to Mrs. Moore, every time you allow, and you know this, Peter Baker, to waive hiring minorities, you take millions out of the minority community and this is what you continuously said while you was running for mayor, that you were going to employ minorities and you were going to make a difference. Again, you knowingly take millions out of the minority community, and it's terrible, and it's shameful. And you were actually born in the first war. Mayor, that's, I mean, that doesn't do something to you. You don't want to see these people gainfully employed. You are sitting in the mayor's seat now, and you're doing nothing about it. In fact, you have become the dragon that you complained about when we had previous white mayors sitting there. Yes, you, Sam Cunningham, you have become that dragon. And in reference to Mrs. Young, as she spoke on the poor, dilapidated, dilapidated conditions of those in the Barwell apart, uh, apartments, Listen to me, with my eyes, I seen a ministers and others break down in tears upon seeing the horrific living conditions where those people dwell at. I'm telling you, man, it's sad. You know, I've read about what King went through in those kind of living conditions, but we were actually there. These people are living in Moe's one apartment. There's no lights except in the furnace room. And you were born over there. What does that really say about you? Again, I say you have become that dragon that when you were an alderman, always complaining about, you have become that dragon. Now, first word or alderman Celia, I'm going to be addressing you because there's something called the CDBG program. This is where all the aldermen had said that X amount of monies were going to be going to the first ward. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was 60%, then the rest of it was going to be allotted amongst the rest of the wards. Is anybody familiar with that? Okay, now, here it is again. You're from the first ward, and as you so often let everybody know, you're our first black mayor. I ask you, Mayor, what's happening with these funds? I mean, seriously? I haven't seen one red cent go towards the first war. And the reason people, while I'm continuously on the first war, because it's the poorest war in the city. They need attention. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Hmm. Margaret Carrasco. Um, yes, good evening. First. Um, I just wanted to share with Waukegan residents, perhaps they're unaware, what are the responsibilities, what does an alderman actually do? Um, aldermen have several responsibilities, the power to regulate for the protection of the public health, safety, morals, and welfare, to license, to tax, and to curb debt. Um, they also meet with fellow council members, as tonight, twice a month. Um, also emergency situations um, in their district, in their area. And zoning is, for example, and they're appointed to different um, committees. And it's a part-time position. And according to the Illinois Public Act 97-0609, there are part-time salaries of $22,000. With that being said, um, this weekend while at Scoop on Saturday night, I um, was given alarming information, of which I contacted authorities today. And I really appreciate for their Prompt response. Um, I inquired as to 
the beach. And this is the responses. Uh, Lieutenant Beach is in charge of the security access. All police officers lock the gate. It is a computer keypad access. Um, the water department also has a code as well. Aldermen are not granted unfettered access to the beach. I repeat, aldermen are not granted unfettered access to the beach. There is a log of every time it is opened. And then um, it was stated, um, if there's any information regarding after hours or inappropriate use, please let me know. So I did. Um, I have obtained information that the gate is being illegally opened for drinking orgies, parties after hours. Each person has one code assigned to them that access that gate and various other, this is the response, doors. And in other words, the code is unique to them and recorded. Therefore, I request a further investigation. And in closing, I would just like to publicly ask, Alvin Villalobos, are you aware of any illegal or unauthorized incidents of drinking? at the beach. Thank you. No. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, that concludes audience time. Okay. Uh, but before we go, Barbara. Bar the granddaughter? Which son? I'm sorry, folks. This is, this is, who's, what son is? Oh, my goodness. What's happening, young lady? Very articulate. Thank you. Go, cool, Barb. We got, this, got our young ladies up here doing it. I like that. Oh, goodness. All right. Motion. Uh, motion by Alderman Valco. Second by Alderman Taylor uh, to approve uh, the monthly treasury report. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's passed and carried. Item six, public works. Alderman Newsom. Thank you, Your Honor. Item A, a motion to authorize the proper city officials to award the 2017 CDBG ADA ramp for City Hall bid to the low qualified bidder D Land Construction LLC of Algonquin, Illinois, for an amount not to exceed $113,970. This project will be charged to CDBG funds in the line item 245-550-427636. And all sidewalk improvements will be charged to line item 307-130-727636 and funded from the 2018 B GEO bonds. The contractor has requested a waiver of the local hiring ordinance. We uh, had discussion about this uh, in committee. It was asked that someone from DLAN be here. Uh, they were not here um, to ask questions. Uh, also, I understand that some of the funding is coming from the county, and they're on a time restraint, uh, according to CDBG. And also, Mr. Hewitt uh, has spoken with the contractor and they are able to meet, um, what was it, a, a person that they- Concrete put, finisher. Concrete finisher. A concrete, concrete person. Concrete finisher, yeah. yeah. Cement finisher. So, um, motion um, to authorize the proper city officials to award the 2017 CDBG and I still move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Tempest. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mozio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item B, motion to authorize the proper city officials to approve a good faith waiver per section 42-458, subsection I-7 for the purchase of a used vector truck for the sewer department from EJ Equipment Incorporated 
of Mantino, Illinois for an amount not to exceed $61,484.78. This purchase will be charged to line item 555-9160-264-93 and funded from the City of Waukee in 2018 uh, C water and sewer bonds. And I saw more. The motion by Alderman Newsom, second Alderman Seeger. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item C. Motion to authorize the proper city officials to approve a good faith waiver per section 42-458, subsection I-7 for the purchase of a demo camera truck for the sewer department from EJ Equipment Incorporate of Mantino, Illinois for an amount not to exceed $190,000 um, with trade in or $200,000 without trade in. And it was voted on in the council, I mean committee meeting, to go uh, without the trade because the truck that we have now can be utilized for other things in the wintertime because there's a heater in there. It doesn't have very many miles on it. Even though the camera is not working, we can use it uh, for the water uh, and sewer when they're doing sewer problems during the wintertime. They can utilize that truck because it still has a lot of life in it. So um, we went with the 200000 without the trade. The purchase will be charged to line item 555-9160-264-93 and funded from the City of Waukegan 2018C Water and Sewer Bonds. And I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Bolton. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosier. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item D, motion to authorize the proper city officials to approve the purchase authority with cart cartograph for an asset management system subscription and software with pricing <coughs> provided under the joint purchasing program with SHI per section 2-458 subsection I three for fiscal year 1819 in the amount of $179,459.79, fiscal year 2019-2020 uh, for $93,581.41 and for fiscal year 2020-2021 in the amount of $93,581.41 for a grand total of $366,622.61. Invoices will be charged to line item 100-910-126494 and 50% to bond proceeds. Line item 555-9160-26495 from the 2018 Sea Water and Sewer Bonds and I so move. A motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Tempez. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call please. <coughs> Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. I'm abstaining and I'd like to explain why. Um, the actual software that we're purchasing with this company, um, the CarCraft, is they have the software, but it's purchased through a company named Shy, which is basically a software um, clearinghouse company. And that is a company that does business with a company that I own, so I'm abstaining for those reasons. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. <clears throat> Item E, motion to authorize the proper city officials to award the 2018 street maintenance program to Peter Baker and Son Company of Lake Bluff, Illinois for an amount not to exceed $6,079,680. Funds for this contract are available using bond proceeds for the amount of $6,079,860 from line item 312-1312-7635, funded from the City of Waukegan 2018A GEO bonds. The contractor has requested a waiver of local hiring ordinance. We had a lengthy discussion in um, 
Public Works Committee regarding this. Mr. Baker uh, was here and answered a few questions. I'm not sure if any, everyone knows that Mr. Baker's company owns the asphalt company. They were the sole bidder. No one else bid it on this contract because they really can't compete because they don't own the asphalt. We did uh, award Peter Baker a contract for street maintenance last year. We were at the end of the fiscal year, I mean the end of the season, and needed to get that work done. I had questions regarding this because of our time restraints last year. I know that everyone that does business with the city of Waukegan knows that we have the 30% local hiring ordinance. It's not a minority ordinance, it's a local hiring ordinance, 30%. I asked him if he was able, uh, why was he not able to meet this knowing that we have this ordinance on the books. He did inform us that he have Waukegan employees, Zion employees, North Chicago employees, um, I guess 15. I asked him how many it would take um, to do this job, and I think it's like 13. There are some subcontractors. I also asked him uh, questions regarding uh, flaggers and laborers. I was not aware that laborers uh, or flaggers needed to be in the union, but I understand that they do need to be in the union. They did have an, a, a, a Waukegan employee that they did get from a local uh, training center, but that employee left and went to a job in Chicago. Um, so we have this on the table now. I, for one, um, am torn between giving such a large contract, and I understand that anyone that bids needs to have um, an asphalt company in order to do such a large project. They, I guess by the state law or ordinance or whatever, they have to have an asphalt company. There are only two in Lake County. One in Antioch and then Peter Baker's. So, so what is the city of Waukegan supposed to do? Do we sit on this and not get the work done? Um, or do we revisit our ordinance 30% because the last three, four years, no one's been able to meet it. No one's been able to meet the uh, local ordinance hiring. So um, I'm under the notion that maybe we need to revisit this ordinance instead of waving it every time someone comes? Or um, do we allow them to reduce and, and supply what they can supply? I think last year we did 10%. They were not able to do 30%. But I'm still torn because if you know that there's big contracts coming up and you know what our local hiring ordinance is, why not get local um, residents that can meet that requirement if you're gonna be bidding on it. So it's up to this council what you wanna do. Your Honor. Mayor, Mayor can I? Your Honor. Well, we have two, we have uh, I'm gonna Alderman Mozio, then with Alderman. Yeah. Alderman the, Mozio, then Alderman Taylor. Yep. Thank the, you. The, the intent of this ordinance was obviously to put Waukegan people to work. Um, but there's a lot of companies that have to do work that, that don't live in Waukegan. They might, not have, they might not have Waukegan residents. I know for a fact, I have two of my very, very best friends that work for Peter Baker, all right? And I know other guys that are friends of mine that went to high school that work for Peter Baker. There's probably five of them that live in Waukegan. One lived in Waukegan and moved out. So I know that they have some, obviously, I think the gentleman told us he had 15. The problem also with a lot of these contracts is Illinois is a pretty heavy union state. So there's, it, with this particular thing, there's three unions he's dealing with. The operator's union, the laborer's union, and the teamster's union. Now he can't, anybody that bids or gets a job can't say, I'm sorry, you don't have a job and you don't have a job, I gotta hire other people. He can't do that. Collective bargaining agreements wouldn't allow him to do that anyway. 
So, and there's only, we asked them, I said, how many asphalt companies are there in Lake County? There's two. There used to be more. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Rough number four, I'm done. I'm done. Mr. McLemore, sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Alderman, Alderman can go. I'm done. Uh, Alderman Tate. Okay, Mayor, I'm going to say something, and please let me say it before you go ballistic because I'm going to defend you. Okay. Okay, so just, I happen to be, whenever we do these contracts, one of the big things we always get is, hey, you know, they contribute to people and all that kind of stuff. So I, I always research and always have done that. In this particular case, um, let me just say, Peter Baker contributes to over $80,000 of campaign money to so many different people throughout the county. It is not unusual, it is not illegal. The problem in this particular case is we sent out a street maintenance contract on June 26, with the bids being sealed and opened on July 18th. And Mayor, I'm sure you don't even know this because what people don't understand is, is these two things don't necessarily go together in practice. But there was a contribution made to your campaign, and just because the timing, which like I said, I'm sure you don't even know because you're your campaign would take that in separate and they would not have looked at bids coming in. So those two things, what I'm trying to say to people is they're not connected, but because of the timing of this, I just don't think I feel comfortable with it being in that time period that the contribution was made in the time period that the bids were. Like I said, please don't take anything out of it, people. It's just the way things happen and but it I think it makes it hard for an alderman to know it and not and then to vote on it so that's that's where I'm coming from does that make sense well this is not the time or to for you to comment on that sir but, Sir, sir, I, I understand that. I wish they would have been in committee could have did that, but um, I, uh, to be honest, I, I don't know that has anything to do with it. I, I, but I can say this, and this is just talking not only to um, this council, speaking with other mayors, because of the lateness, because of the lateness, in putting out these contracts, just about every body's season has already been scheduled. And what I mean by that is, typically, uh, all of these contractors, all of them, all the asphalt, concrete, they normally start their scheduling around February, March. And in February, March, you, they send out all of their bids to other to other municipalities or wherever, state, federal, whatever, and then they have their schedules throughout the rest of the summer. Now at the end of the summer, we're just not putting out these contracts because of the timing and the bonding, whatever have you. That's where we're at. Now, the unfortunate part is for either Mr. Baker, let's just say, let's say, let's just, let's take the Baker name out of it, but Company A, they are the only ones who can do the job right now. Let's just say other companies wanted to, because of the man, the the number of employees that's needed for this particular job, they're not going to pull them off existing jobs to come and do our job. It's not going to happen. Now that we passed our bonds and we have our, the, the funds in there, we will be able to start our bidding process that February, March area, so we will be right in line while everybody can come in. And that was the intent when we started our comprehensive planning, our capital improvement planning, and then our funding planning. We have now 
we can now match others and others can come in. Simply what that'll do for us, that put us in position where, hey, people's numbers will change at that time. But right now, at this time, at this moment in the season, no one is going to stop their job just for Waukegan. Not when they have others already lined out and probably then pay dollars for them already. So while I am very sympathetic, and I was one of the chief uh, persons talking about making sure Waukegan people get an opportunity. That was me in the first war as the alderman. So for someone to tell me that I don't care, I'm this, I think you are misled. We're positioning ourselves so we can now be in, this in line with everybody else as they're doing these bidding processes. And because the alderman didn't mention it, and, and, and uh, to be honest, I didn't know, uh, from a campaign, I, I, I don't really know what that has to do with anything because that will then simply say that because a person gave not only myself or other aldermen contribution, that our decision is weighed on that. I'm here to tell you, myself, and I believe every alderman up here, and I'm going to reach out and say the vast majority of our politicians have not, will not, lose their integrity by voting because a person gave them something from a, con a contribution of a campaign. In the audience right here, over 30 years of being in politics, Mr. Kyle can vouch for that. Our integrity is never, ever questioned about what a person gives us. What our job is, as an elected official is to do what's in the best interest of our community. And that's it. I have, and I think others, have given back campaign contributions when they thought it was not in the best interest of them and what they're representing. So I thank you for bringing that up to us. And that's a very important. It's not the contribution there. It's just the timing. The timing, the yeah. three week period. It, that yes, ma'am. If it would have been any other time, it's it, it just like I said, it, yeah. it's not an issue, and, and, and it's you great. probably don't even know it. Yeah, and it's great that you bring those things up because that is the process which we have. But I think, matter of fact, I know those who know me up here, even Alderman Taylor, who has mentioned it, can vouch. Our integrity cannot be compromised. Mm -hmm. What is the most important thing is that we put these bids out, and they were out for uh, the, what's the, the total number of days are supposed to be out, Mike? Is it 30 days? What, what does the bid process say? 10, 10 business days? Yes. 10 calendar days. That's our, that's our ordinance. It is nothing new. Now, if we, if we feel that we need to change that, we'll change it. It's open. It is transparent. And that's the way it needs to be. But we're going to move Waukegan forward. And if we need to change some of the process in which we do that, so be it. But this community cannot be and should not be hampered by misinformation. So tonight before us, and I heard some strong debate in our committee meetings about this project. This is the one of many. And I'm looking forward to continue to invest in Waukegan. But thank you for a very strong conversation in the committee. But I think now it's time uh, for us to, to put the vote on the floor. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. OK, motion by Alderman. Most of my alderman ten passed, second by alderman Mozio. Any other further questions to the motion? Can you repeat the vote? No, no, repeat the, the motion? Yeah, motion. Motion authorized proper city officials to award 2018 street maintenance program to Peter Baker and Sons of Lake Bluff 
for an amount not to exceed six million seven seventy nine thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. Funds for these contracts are available using bond proceeds for the amount of six million seventy nine thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. And the line item three one two one three one two two seven six three five funded from the city of Waukegan, a 2018 AGO bonds. Contract has requested a waiver of the local hiring ordinance. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. No, for the reasons I stated. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosier. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Nay. Al Nay. Alderman Tempest. Aye. The motion has been passed and carried. That's all. All right. <clears throat> Finance, Alderman Valco. Thank you, sir. The uh, committee met this evening and approved a motion to approve an ordinance providing the issuance of not to exceed $8,800,000 in general obligation bonds series. The 2018 D is in David of the city of Waukegan, Lake County, Illinois, and for the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on the said bonds. Now, the city council approved a resolution to pay Angel Gonzalez and his attorneys $9.5 million with $900,000 covered by the insurance carrier funds and $8.6 million to be funded within four months. This ordinance allows for the funding of the remaining balance via a 10-year tax exam, exempt bond issue, and I so move. As motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman uh, Newsom. Are there any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item B, a motion to amend the City of Waukegan Code of Ordinances by adding Chapter 2, Article Roman Numeral 6, Division 3, con uh, conveyance, of real, conveyance of Real Property. And this modification to the City Code will confirm compliance with state law as well as require a resolution by city council prior to any acquisition or disposal of real property by the city of Waukee, including an explanation of the corporate purposes of the acquired property, the funding required, and formalize proper notification to necessary internal parties of the purchase, trade, donation, foreclosure, or any other conveyance. This will not apply to property purchases or sales already governed by the Community Developmental Block Grant, obviously known as CDBG, and it was fully funded, that was fully funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And I so move, Your Honor. A motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Bolton. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item C, the committee approved a motion to approve a resolution accepting the granting of property located at 37915 North Northern Avenue, Beach Park, Illinois, 687. So you can see the prior ordinance that we just passed, the motion. Uh, falls down onto this one here. A property located at 37915 North Northern Avenue Beach Park within the corporate limits of the City of Waukegan, pin number 0806206007 is a vacant lot currently owned by the Waukegan Port District located in close proximity to the fire station five and the fire department believes this site meets their needs for training purposes. So one, uh, the city code ordinance works in regard to this one also. They work hand in hand, and I so move, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Bolt, I'm sorry, Tim Pass. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman <coughs> Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. 
Alderman Tempest. Aye. <coughs> Item D, the committee approved a motion to approve an ordinance ascertaining the prevailing wage rate of wages in Lake County for city public works projects. The state of Illinois requires that the city of Waukegan adopt an ordinance to comply with prevailing rate of wages as defined by the state law for laborers, mechanics, and other workers performing construction of public works projects performed using city of Waukegan funds. And I so move, sir. Most of all, Mr. Balco, second by Alderman Seeger. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item E, the committee approved a motion to approve the 2017 Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, known as CAPER, from the period of May 1st, 2017 through April 30th, 2018, and to further authorize the CDBG director to make amendments as necessary and required by HUD. In accordance with the U.S. Department of Housing and Ur uh, Urban Development, Regulations all grantees are required to submit a, to HUD a consolidation annual performance and evaluation report which outlines the accomplishments and the progress made toward the five-year consolidation plan, the goals for the program period. The attached report contains accomplishments data from the 2017 period year beginning May 1 through April 30th, uh, 2018, and I so move, sir. Motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Newsom. I need questions to the motion. Roll call, please. Alderman Balco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item F. The committee approved a motion to authorize the CDBG director to enter into a housing rehabilitation contract with Willie and Hattie Carter, homeowners at 531 Frolic Avenue, and first call contract service funding from line item 245-550-2244-45 for an amount not to exceed $34,170, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Bolton. Are there any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Item G, the committee voted to authorize the CDB direct, uh, director to enter into a housing rehabilitation contract with Eugene A. Mayfield, Jr., the homeowner of 2704 Hyde Park, and the C&J Home Improvement and Company. Funding from the light item is 245-550-2244-45 for an amount not to exceed, and this was an amended figure in finance, the correct figure is $32,425. That was amended in the uh, Finance Committee. On June 15, 2018, the CDBG Department received bids for 2704 Hyde Park to engage in professional rehabilitation services, and the CDBG recommended the award, awarding the bid to C&J Home Improvement. Information on specific work to be completed is attached due to the program limiting one contract, one contract per contractor at one time, the lowest bidder was not recommended for the award, but rather the second lowest bidder. And that first low bidder was first call contract services that took the bid on the previous property. So HUD says you can have two contractors, one contractor, working on two houses at the same time with CDBG funds. And I so move, sir. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Tempest. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. 
Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. That's all tonight, sir. All right. A special Judiciary uh, Committee meeting. That meeting. Alderman Villalobos. Yes. Uh, so we convene a special uh, Judiciary Committee uh, for an item that was held over from the last uh, council meeting. Um, the alderman for the areas is informed and uh, is pleased with the, this motion. So, um, motion to approve zoning calendar 2553, map amendment rezoning 623 North Avenue from B2 community shopping to R3 single family residence. Uh, the property owner did come and spoke to us briefly about um, the work she's done re, uh, rehabbing the household and is, wants to put it on market and has a buyer already lined up. Uh, but because of the zoning as B2 community shopping is causing a little bit of a hiccup there and getting the financing done for the potential buyer. So making an R3 single family will bring another family to Waukegan to invest in our community. So I think this is good, so so move. Motion by Automobile Lobo, second by Alderman Mozio. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Motion passed and carried. Old business. Uh, motion by uh, Alderman Tempest. Second by Alderman Bolton. Uh, to approve zoning calendar 2556 site plan approved for Marriott Town Place Suite. We had an opportunity to sit down with the, uh, with the owners. We got some corrections made on some of the items that uh, we had to add questions to, and uh, we're ready to move on. Thank you. Uh, any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. I'm abstaining. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosier. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Um, and I want to make a small note uh, I, after speaking with them. I want to uh, appreciate uh, the commitment to giving our com uh, they're giving our community, which is mainly uh, using organized labor, uh, the opportunity to perform on this project. So well, kudos to the, the new hotel, uh, working with organized labor uh, and using this project more particularly since the uh, the other hotel had some had some, uh, some issues going on that, they, that they're gonna address. So we really, really appreciate them for reaching out to the organized labor market and within the Waukegan area. New business. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by all. Second by Alderman Taylor. To approve vendor payments dated July 16, 2018, the total amount of one million four hundred twenty-five thousand five hundred ninety-nine dollars and sixty cents. Are there any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosier. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Uh, motion passed and carried. Item B. Motion by Alderman. Valco, second by Alderman Bolton, to approve regular payroll dated July 6, 2018, in a total amount of $1,540,291.29. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Motion passed and carried. Motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman Seeger, to approve final cash out for the name listed on the agenda, payroll dated July 6, 2018, a total amount of $52,071.57. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Motion passed and carried. Item D. A motion by Alderman Bolton, second by Alderman Seeger to approve vacation cash out <coughs> payroll dated 
Date of <laughs> July 6, 2018, in a total amount of $404.85. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Uh, motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Mosio. To approve outdoor special events, the sponsor has applied under the directive of non city governmental use of city owned buildings and venues. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Motion by Alderman Mosio, second by Alderman Villalobos uh, to approve all block parties. Are there any questions to the motion? I have a question. Y yes, sir. Alderman Villalobos. Yeah. In one of these applications, well, it's actually not even an application, it says street closure of Harbor Place between Madison and Clayton. And it looks like that's uh, attached to an event. Um, because it's not a block party, it's an outdoor event, it looks like, on the land, on Port District land. So my question is, did they apply for an outdoor application initially? I don't recall, I, I might have overlooked it. But again, this doesn't seem to be an actual block party. So one of that, like I said, it's not even an application, it's the picture of the space itself. That's, that's Harbor Place, and that's tradition how they just, well, even when GWDC does their events, they submit the application to <coughs> even though they have Harbor's Edge there. So my question is probably procedural. You know, what's the proper process that should be gone through to get these uh, street closures? I'm not opposed to the event. I think it'd be good. Yeah, it and it's great to have events at the lakefront. It's just, okay. again, procedural. Okay. Well, I certainly get that looked at, uh, but I'm... I'm very sure. Um, okay. I'm, I'm extremely certain that they went through mm -hmm. our police fire that normal process. Just could, but we'll get it checked out. We'll let you know. All okay. right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed and carried. Uh, item G. Uh, most of all, will be a little second more than Newsom to adopt as presented intergovernmental agreement between the city of Waukegan, Illinois, and the Waukegan School District for the installation and ongoing access for warning sirens to be located on various school district properties. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. All right, uh, item 11, ordinances there being none. Item 12, closing items, Alderman's time. Madam Clerk. Alderman Velko. I will pass tonight, ma'am. Alderman Taylor. Um, I just wanted to thank the volunteers who worked on SCOOP. Um, I, it was very pleasant. Um, unfortunately, we had an incident that um, has kind of clouded SCOOP, but the actual event itself was the volunteers did a great job. Um, I want to remind people in the Ninth Ward, normally I have tons of requests for block parties. I have not had a one. So if you're thinking about it, come talk to me. Block parties are a great way to meet your neighbors, get to know your community. Don't forget to sign up for them. Third, I want to remind people that, um, as everybody knows, 120 is under construction and it's a nightmare. <laughs> but it's getting worse because we will now be starting this week we will be blocking off river road access as oh they do the construction so if you can avoid that area please do as you know fountain square area is a mess um stay patient it's not the city that's doing it um but like i said i just want to remind people come up with alternative routes if possible thank you alderman bolton Yes, I want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting uh, last week's meeting. It was a success. I really want to thank the, all the departments for your support. And I really want to thank all the new businesses that came forth. 
and uh, Ms. Evans, raise your hand. She has a Spanish class that she's going to be teaching. We have halfway houses opening up, halfway house programs, culinary schools, and um, and then also I believe um, Ms. Powell has a business to soon to announce also. So thank you all again. Alderman Seeger. I, I'd just like to remind everybody, uh, Mr. Reynolds put a lot of work into this mural. And if you get a chance and you haven't seen it, please go by. And David Motley, I thank you for all your assistance in the program too. You deserve a pat on the back, sir. You discovered him. He's got a talent that's uh, unbelievable. I was a, every time he started painting, and what really got me is when this little, little girl picked up a paintbrush, and she was helping Dad. That impressed me so much. So you see, it's, it's, it's an art that's passed on, and I hope, I hope his little girl gets really involved in it. And uh, if I were, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> if I ever wanted a painting done, it'd have to be by him. And I'm sure if Mr. Bradbury was here today, he'd, he'd probably go over three or four times too and take a look at that because it represents what he had as a talent, as a writer. That's about it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Alderman Mosio. A couple of things. Um, I was absent from the last council meeting, but I was in Detroit for the volleyball. But right in the middle of Detroit, right next to a fountain, right in the middle of all the skyscrapers have a park. In that park, they have sand and two storage containers that are cut out, that's a tiki bar. So if Detroit can do it, why can't we do it on the lake? It's a, just, it, they had food, they had beer, they had sand. I mean, I've been, I've been talking about that. Again, we need to get some storage containers down at the lakefront so that people, any entrepreneur can do what they want with it. From selling tacos to water to kites to skateboards to bikes to having a drink, whatever it may be. I thought of an idea. I'm, obviously, I can't do it. I'm, employee of the city, but I'd buy a storage container and buy two gator things and charge people 10 bucks a ride. I'll take all your stuff out to the beach and come back and get you. <laughs> well, that's an idea. Well, yeah, I got a lot more. So anybody that wants free ideas, come see me. Okay, <laughs> down at the beach. I got plenty of ideas. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. the storage containers are cheap. You can probably get them for about $2,000. Put 10 of them down there and we can figure out the finances and, and all this and that later on. But we need more things down there for people to enjoy, okay? Uh, on more of a somber note, Alderman Taylor mentioned it, uh, a tragedy after the scoop down to Waukegan. And I've seen this too far too many times as an educator. I knew the, the young person that was tragically taken. He was in the PE office about every day when I was over at uh, Brookside campus. and. Um, I just ask that we don't become callous to acts like this. I think in this country we've become callous to people having their life taken. This didn't have to happen. This didn't have to happen. We as a community and we as a, and, and this, I keep harping on this because there's only one common thing where all of these people meet and that's school. All of these young people meet in school. Now obviously not in the summer, but eight, eight and a half months out of the year, they're in school every day. And we have to do a better job in school of teaching about consequences and conflict resolution and things like that. I mean, the reading, writing, and arithmetic is important, obviously. But all the other social skills that go with school and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable is far more important, at least in my mind. And we need to start thinking that way and putting pressure on not only the leaders up here, but the leaders at 1201 Sheridan Road to try to understand that, that that's the most important thing that we can do as a community. Thank you. Alderman Villalobos. Yes, thank you. Um, first thing I want to bring up, um, <clears throat> for those who may have 
or hear maybe a last uh, council meeting or saw the video or saw anything on social media. Um, there was a bunch of residents here that were speaking out against a person who was appointed to our CDBG stakeholders panel. Um, I did look into it and found out that Ms. Grasco did resign as of May 31st. Uh, I did read the resignation letter. Um, there is vacancies then, so in my estimation, that situation is done and over with. Um, the local workers, waivers, the other thing. Um, for me, that is a, I voted yes to both of those waivers. And I still am, have torn torn outlook on that situation. On one end, I do want to I do want to support local hires here in Waukegan because um, everyone needs a livable wage. On the other hand, too, I have heard that at times it's been harder for us to get more competitive bidding done for the city of Waukegan because of this. So um, I'm not sure what the history of this ordinance is or where it stems from. It's something to look into. Um, so the balance is, do we get more hires in Waukegan and cut out competitive bidding? Or do we reduce the number? Do we put a moratorium on it to see how it works? And if we do get more competitive bids, if we're able to save money for the city overall, that means the city can do more things potentially, or <laughs> ideally reduce the levy, but hey. Um, but again, this local workers waiver situation, again, in my time, it's happened consistently. And I've been in office, this is my fourth year now. And it's been pretty consistent. And again, in, in speaking to, and it's mostly with public work uh, projects, it, is, it does get cut, difficult to get competitive bids. As you see, Peter Baker and Son was the only sole bidder. We, we've had multiple occasions where it's been sole bidders because a lot of businesses can't believe they can meet that requirement. Um, and so I don't know like where we move forward with this, but um, again, I, it's, one, it's something that I still struggle with, honestly. I did vote yes again, but I do struggle with that decision-making process. Um, it's a tough one to work to think over. And uh, lastly, um, as my other two colleagues mentioned, uh, the incident at the scoop. Um, it's unfortunate that an incident like that occurred, particularly with youth of our community, um, but also that that negative occasion will impact that family forever, but it also impacts Waukegan too, beyond that evening. People again look at Waukegan as a place that's dangerous. I can't go down to Waukegan. That's the city's premier event for the year and someone took it upon themselves to disregard anything that, to disregard the possible momentum the city has going forward, you know? And again, it, it, it just, there's so much negativity from a situation like that. It's hard for me to even express it. Um, it's sad, it is. And um, you know, the victim's family, I wish them all. I, know, I have no idea what the situation was that led to that incident. I don't know the individuals involved. Um, but it happened in downtown, it happened during one of our premier events for the city, and so that blights it for some time in my eyes. It was, this was gonna happen, unfortunately, again, for our community. As we try to strive and sit up here and try to make the best choices we can to see our community move forward, to see this vision that we all have for it, for a better place to live, um, an incident like this just, it just doesn't make it, like, make it seem like we're moving, pop, moving forward as much as we could be. Um, it's a sad situation in Ghana. So um, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Alderman Newsom. Thank you. Um, I just want to say a thank you to um, Shalem Seventh Day Adventist Church. They are at 1105 Pine Street. They had a cleanup on Sunday, July 8th. And um, men, women, and children, Pastor Paul Young uh, came out with some of his um, parishioners. Uh, and Lamont Taylor, I wanted to mention his name for coordinating with uh, Susanna here at the city. Uh, we cleaned up Glenflora from Jackson all the way to Lewis Avenue on both sides. We did Buttrick from Glenflora all the way to Grand Avenue. Ridgeland between Buttrick and Pine Street and Pine Street was done. So we took on uh, several bags of garbage and they're looking to do even more in the community. They're looking for projects uh, that they can volunteer for. So um, 
I know Suzanne and I are going to put our heads together, maybe uh, help with some work in some of the alleys and things, uh, maybe painting some of the um, graffiti that we may get, uh, people tagging. Hopefully we won't get much. But anyway, uh, be, they will be available to um, help us in any way that they can. Um, and I also wanted to thank Public Works for uh, picking up all the garbage bags uh, on Monday morning. So thanks again, and look forward to uh, some more cleaning projects. That's all I have. Alderman Tempest. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about the Dutch elm problem we have. Some of you know Dutch elm disease came into our city a number of years ago. We still have a number of trees sitting in the parkways, dead, and I, I believe they're a liability to the, to the city, and we, we need to get taking them down. I don't know if we need more tree people to take them down, more forestry, or to have a special, special area to say we're gonna get this all cleaned up so we're not going across town to take one down, or get an area and clean it up. But we have a problem, and it's a, I think it's a huge liability facing us, so we, we need to get going on it. I know if we need no, more help or, or how we're going to handle it, Mayor, but that's why you're the mayor. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I will say this. Uh, the Public Work Director and I have uh, really talked about it, and we're in the process of getting a good a strategic plan where we can go so we don't jump around. That has always been an yeah, issue. That's a problem. Um, jumping around, and uh, uh, we might have to go to bed or which wall we have to start in well, first. If you, if you get in an area and get that clean, then it's done. Yes, sir. And, and you're in a concentrated area. This idea of going across town and take a tree down, then we go across the other side, we lose too much. Yeah, and, and we and we have, and uh, there is some. There is. I will say that there is some equipment that is being looked at. Can Am we, I willing to help? Uh, well, legally, can I do that, Counselor? Uh, well, I'm a good worker. Um, well, oh boy. we're gonna say well and leave that alone. But no, seriously. Uh, not only are we looking at that, but we're also we're looking at the best practice of how to go into uh, the, you know, the various wards and stay in that ward till we've completed. And I tell you, the the as, as much as I say, uh, uh, seem like I'm being criticized criticized for not paying attention to the south side. But when it comes to trees, I had no idea that the northern part of the of the city of Waukegan. I tell you, the seventh ward, the seventh ward, good night, man. They're, they're just flooded with trees uh, of that nature. So but we'll, we, we should have something for you. Uh, give us uh, probably that early August. We want to really get through this. We've got to get a plan to attack it. Yes, sir. Yeah, no question about it. We, we're definitely going to be working on that. And, and Mike and I have already talked about it. But we'll, uh, we'll have something for not only for you and for the rest of the aldermen as we're doing it. Other things, going to lay it out ward by ward. Um, uh, two things for me. One, I had the opportunity to be at this Sunday's uh, 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 the John Con Conrad Waukegan Yacht Club. It is a new name, John Conrad Waukegan Yacht Club. Had an opportunity to be there. What uh, a special event uh, where they bless the fleet. And you go around and circle around the harbor and on both harbors and, and go out for a small ride. I tell you, you have an opportunity to get out and see Waukegan out on that Lake Michigan, you will just be stunned of the beauty that's out there. Second, I had uh, today, I went by the, and visited the Waukegan Park District at Upton Park. I wanna make sure I have this right. Uh, the Douglas, help me out, David. Douglas House. Douglas House. What? an amazing job the Waukegan Park District um, is doing uh, to handle special needs children. They bring them out, their parents drop them off, and they give them an experience like any other child gets an experience out in the park coloring and some of, some of these children are on a severely special needs. I, I, I would, my, my jaw just dropped to the ground, and as all of us probably here have lived in this community, I have never known that that Douglas house was there. If 
anybody get a chance, get, go by there. What? It's just amazing to watch these little, uh, from the ages of uh, 10 up to about 13, 14 years of age, how they are treated and nurtured and giving an experience of being a normal kid. And I had to, I had to shout out kudos to Jay and his team, uh, to, well, to the whole entire park district, even thinking of something like that. Uh, it, was just, it was just amazing. And, and that's just, as, as Greg Morsey always said, that's Walt Keegan Tough, man. Can't get better than that. With that being said, I'm going to get a motion by Alderman Taylor, a second by Alderman Bolton, to adjourn. All those in favor, qu any questions on the motion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Motion's passed. Thank, Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>